surroundings check. I need a total, complete, uninterrupted focus. Oh, mummy. Wait, is that a person or a sarcophagus that looks like a person? It has a nice backlight. I appreciate the alternating white and light blue, even if my colorblindness makes distinguishing them incredibly challenging. That's a lot of frozen people. I guess when the Guardian said all occupants expired, that was just BS. It wasn't just one, the entire crew seems to be frozen and hopefully still alive. Well, this one looks different. Okay, come on, with all your advanced technology, you can't even stand in the center of the platform. Well, if everything is advanced, I gotta assume they have advanced weed, so maybe they had some before getting frozen. I guess it takes the edge off of bringing yourself to the edge of death. I am noticing the pattern of lights is always the same. It almost looks like some kind of code. And this is the one the Guardian beam thermal waves at. I haven't found the body, but I assume the revived Atlantean must be no more. Oh, okay, I shouldn't assume, but if they aren't here, at least, to help me, then it doesn't really matter. Okay, the lights here are all white or off. I can switch between light blue and white. Damn, the differences in color are hard to see. Who picked these colors? Since everything else is very bright, would it have been so difficult to have a darker color? And apparently it resets if I get it wrong, so that's good to know. Okay, I hazard a guess based on the viewer earlier. The controls of this star travel stasis pod have been modified to prevent unauthorized activation. To initiate the process, the code panel must be fully set and the field generating base must sense the presence of an occupant. Depressing the activation button completes the sequence and generates the field. This is probably the lock. Each stasis chamber shares the same unlock code, thankfully. I hope when they say it can be primed, that means it won't reset when I have it right. Because if I need to use this, but like, not on me, I don't want to have to test if it is configured right by turning it on, since that sort of defeats the purpose of a trap. Right, my vocalization is out of sync from my actual thoughts. A stasis chamber would make a great place to throw some annoying electronic pest. I wonder if it works on an artificial life form, or at least it fails in such a way that the Guardian does too. That's one occupant I wish would expire. And it's closed. Great. All right. Assets. I have an open stasis chamber and... Oh. Bigger guns nearby. That's the mining turret. This energy beam tool can emit frequencies from the low subsonic range to the ultra-high electromagnetic range. It is able to generate extreme level one spatial distortion fields. To enable this device, an access code must be set. For safety, the tool initially activates at minimum power, where accidental discharge at life forms will cause only momentary nervous disruption. So it is also locked and it may not be able to outright kill but I suppose it would make a more effective weapon than my useless bullets. Okay, to unlock this, you just have to hit the, this. The, I'm just making things worse, aren't I? Okay, it also resets and it's not randomized. It is in the same initial position. That could be useful information. Okay, I have to face a hyper-advanced AI and a robotic body that may at any moment break into this room with the ability to transport itself in space, shoot thermal rays, and store people in time bubbles, and all I have is a mining drill and an empty stasis chamber, and both of which are not immediately accessible. Okay, first, I'll prime the stasis chamber, just in case the opportunity presents itself for a heroic struggle to push the bad guy into the chamber of doom and turn it on. Sounds fun, but I wonder if I could outmuscle. Oh my camera! I have a camera! I can take pictures of each chamber and be thankful some people were too drunk to stand centrally. With all those pictures, I can go through the film quickly and with each unique angle see the totality of the backlight code needed to set this chamber correctly.
It didn't reset. Good, this thing is primed properly. So what did that accomplish again? How can I convince the Guardian to go into this damn thing? He wants me. So I could stay here and hit the button and we both freeze? That plan sucks. No, I'm wrong. It's the wrong assumption. He wants the crystal. Okay, this won't be helpful unless I can also disable him or he will just quickly escape once he grabs it. Mining laser. I have to deduce a solution for this very damn quickly. Meditation is probably preferable. Om ni pa me hum. That's always calming. Anyway, there are six buttons. Each button controls three adjacent circles. Now, the direction of rotation isn't necessarily always the same. First, let me define how to represent this. Each circle can be thought of as being in one of three states. The red state, which I want based on the central color of the button, and two other states I don't want. Every move will turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. I can represent this with modulo arithmetic. I will use plus as clockwise and minus as anti-clockwise. That's not all I notice. The ordering of all three states is consistent. The same color occurs clockwise on the red each time, so I can think that there is one state that consistently is set properly when moved once clockwise and twice anti-clockwise, and one state that is consistently set properly when moved twice clockwise and once anti-clockwise. This is reminding me of another puzzle from another world, the turning of the divasa. Similar approach though. I need to make a table of moves to examine. From the top left circle, I've labeled them zero through five. I will use dunny numerals for the circle itself and Arabic numerals when I want to refer to the move. The idea is so I can use an, a numbering system for both the move attached to the circle and the circle itself without having to worry about getting confused between which number is referring to what concept. So the dunny zero is the circle zero and the Arabic zero is the move that is attached to that circle. Okay, the table is complete, but this is not as easy as a turning of the diva sa. Even if each move is only a single turn clockwise or anti-clockwise, because each button moves three things, and there is a clear pattern to what they move. I can't just try to cancel things out as directly. 
There are two ways to cancel. Either move something in the same direction three times, which is the same as not moving it at all, or have the clockwise move for every anti-clockwise move. Or a combination. Four clockwise and one anti-clockwise would be like not moving, since one anti cancels one regular clockwise, which leaves three clockwise, which would be like not moving at all. Finally, multiples of three share the same property, so six identical moves is also like not moving. But back to canceling. Even the best canceling move I see here, which are moves four and five, still leave circle three moving anti-clockwise and circle zero moving clockwise. Those are very far apart. So figuring out how to cancel just one of them is near impossible. Whatever is going to touch one is going to touch a lot more. There is no single or, or simple move that works well as a foundation for more complicated sets of moves. Remember, like the turning of the diva saw, I'm trying to build composite moves, algorithms that say, if I move this, this, and this, I end up with exactly these changes. And I am trying to get to a point where the composite moves change only one thing, but because each possible adjacent move that could cancel will always turn something else, and to fix that requires another adjacent move that turns something else, I have to get a little holistic here. I have to run through many moves all around the puzzle for any given algorithm simply because of the nature of how these moves work. I'll start by going in the opposite direction of trying to limit the number of changes I make. Moves zero and three, if used together, move every circle at least once in some direction. Same with moves one and four and moves two and five. At that point, I just start repeating. So these are three unique ways of transforming everything on the board. I know it's a lot, but at least it gives me something better to build off of. There is another thing I could do. This puzzle does not randomize. So I only need to figure out how to move the following. Whatever I do, even if I cannot isolate a move from changing something else, as long as I can work towards this goal, it won't matter. Remember, because a clockwise move is the same as having two anti-clockwise moves, it doesn't matter if I move that one clockwise or two anti-clockwise the result will still be the same. This isn't entirely like the turning of the diva saw. Combining moves to have an eventual effect of moving only one thing would be nice, but ultimately I might not necessarily need that to reach my goal. Let's see if I can find something more helpful. I may not end up using all these algorithms, but each algorithm, especially if it only moves a few things, can be helpful in building up others. I suppose this will become more clear later, Looking back at those three all-around-the-world move sets, I noticed that a combo of one and four along with two and five cancel really well. That leaves circle zero double clockwise and circle two double anti-clockwise. look. One move cancels out both of them. Remember, moving them by three in one direction is like not moving them at all. And that move itself brings in circle one clockwise on its own. I can move circle one on its own with this algorithm.
Now I have a building block. Can I cancel in such a way where some algorithm has circle one paired with some other thing? Then I can cancel circle one and get something unique for the other circle. I notice that if I make two moves of move two and one move of three, I end up with this. If I want to clear out circle one, I can use the algorithm I found for isolating circle one, but repeat it twice. Even though I am making so many moves, mathematically I know that they will have this result. And even in all their complexity, they will reduce down to something simple. Combining these two moves, I get four presses of move one, four presses of move two, one press of move three, two presses of move four, and two presses of move five. I can simplify this. Making the same move more than three times becomes redundant. The only changes that actually change state is moving it by one or two. If I move it by three, it's like I did nothing. If I move it by four, it's like I moved it by one. So I can divide out three from each time I would otherwise make a move more than three times. And all that matter will be the remainder. So this move, which thanks to canceling would move circle four by only one clockwise, can be represented by one and two and three and four and four and five and five. I can now move circles one and four independently. What else can I do? Hmm. For kicks, I'm gonna see what happens if I make every move at least once. I mean, hey, Whatever I build off of this is going to simplify down anyway, like I just did with the previous algorithm. I want more combinations of moves that do interesting things because a lack of regularity and an increase in chaos leads to more opportunity to see places I can cancel or do interesting things. So it turns out that making every move exactly once leads to the following. This is really starting to feel like a waste of time. Hold on. Move five allows me to cancel circles four and five. I'll move them in the opposite directions they're currently set to. So I'm gonna add move five to this. That is going to bring in circle zero, which I didn't have before, but it will cancel four and five, leaving me with just cir uh, circle zero, one, and three being moved which doesn't seem like it'd be helpful until I realize that I have something that can get rid of circle one, as long as I use it twice. Up here, I have included all the moves necessary to get this. The five move I brought in, two of the circle one changing, and then the all around the world move I used originally. I'm simplifying everything down. And once I do that, I am left with zero and one and one and three and five. I have an algorithm now that moves circles three and circle zero by one clockwise, also known as half of the solution I need. And I have a move that can move circle one independently. And I have a move that moves circle four independently. Well, that's it then. Circle one must move one anti-clockwise, but my combo is for one clockwise. Well, like I said earlier, one anti is the same as two clockwise. So I use the circle one combo twice. Same with circle four. Now I use that dual three zero combo just once to combine all this together and simplify. I end up with zero and one and one and two and five, which is a massive simplification of the application of all these algorithms. Looks quite unimposing and small. Will it work? And that did it. Please tell me red was the right color of things. Okay, I have an active gun. 
pointed straight at the empty stasis chamber. This is a relatively better situation than earlier. As the viewer earlier mentioned, it operates initially at a low power setting that causes momentary nervous disruption. And I can't figure out how to adjust the power, so let's just hope it works on the Guardian. Okay, what exactly is the plan? Shoot him or freeze him? Okay, first, I'll wait for him to go for the crystal, and then I need to come up with the second part of that plan quicker than I hoped. Oh, this thing has a visual reticle with perfect accuracy. Oh, he feels pain. He does have a nervous system, albeit an artificial. Oh. Get in the chamber. Oh. Okay, now how do I hit the button from here? That worked. No, not stasis. Shooting something actually worked for once? I didn't, like, break the system or anything. Really, I was just firing in panic. That idea came from the gut. Oh, damn it. It happened all so fast. I didn't have a chance to give a great one-liner. I should have held up for a bit to show some professional villain hero courtesy. You were quite frigid in our previous interactions, Guardian. And now you're fully stiff. I'm not sorry I gave you the cold shoulder. I see you needed to chill out, so I snowed you to the stasis door. Please, enjoy your isolation. I certainly won't be breaking the ice with you anytime soon. Right. How does this door open now? Hopefully there aren't more guardians. Like, you break one and another is brought in. I doubt it. When it comes to finding more AIs, I guess you could say there's probably a hiring freeze. Okay, seriously, I got to stop with that. There it is, the genetic device. Missing exactly three pods. Well, what do you know? I have them. But I should hold off doing anything else with us. As of now. I've returned the pods to their proper origin. They still need to fulfill their final function, though. One of the videos mentioned a launch system. We're probably be in this room somewhere. Probably in this gigantic, important-looking plinth here. Okay, this looks circular. The genetic device looks circular. I think I can figure out the rest from here. But if I launch now... I'm kind of either stuck here, or getting an escape pod and launching to lands unknown. Also, there's the whole Alex being trapped in limbo thing I gotta deal with. Speaking of which, he mentioned in his journal hiding in the Time Geek room, and it was when he would have been in this area. But I don't see anywhere big enough to house a Time Gate. Oh, I didn't see that little, I want to say, broom cupboard? A little, like, hallway there. Maybe there's a ladder or a button or... Oh, my goddess! It, it... This path is supposed to lead to the elevator. And this glass is clear. There's no way. This isn't a trick. Oh, my giddy aunt. Its internal dimensions do not follow Euclidean geometry in its disagreement of being greater in quantity with its external dimensions. It, it's smaller on the outside, basically. Thank God, you defeated the Guardian. I thought you were done for. Now we're almost home. Do exactly as I say, and you'll save us both. Be careful, though. This gate, th there's something not quite right with it. Perhaps the Guardian used this portal for the gene pod transport. If it took all three, then yeah, this thing may very well be unstable. <laughs> I'm so glad you're still alive. Thanks. Listen carefully. This time gate is a prison for me only because the transport is incomplete. It's losing stability. You must finish the transport process. Right. Compared to what I just did, easy. Just for kicks. I want to see if the rightmost button finally works. Likely not. I think it's Easter Eye. Oh, the Moai. They look to be in the similar positions to when I left. This... We're going home! Okay, I'll turn this thing on and send you on your way. I'm sure you realize the genetic device must return with us. Uh, to the Atlanteans, it's old technology. But for us, it's a quantum leap. Give me the device, send me back, then follow me through. 
will share in the rewards. I promise you. I mean, sharing in the reward is nice, but not dying horribly in a collapsing wormhole is also nice. But that's not my main concern. With a single act, we can advance humanity to the level of these star travelers. Put the device into this time gate and finish my transport. Then, follow me through the gate. Ignoring danger warnings is always, Alex. I mean, yeah, I send the device. Then what? How are you going to use it? Or examine or even learn from it without breaking it? We'll return with an expedition and revive the Atlanteans. That might work, but... But... What about them? I, I'm sure they want to go to what they consider home as much as I do. Do I have the right? Um, I mean, I'm not so sure about this plan because of, uh, traps. That's right. Traps. What are you worried about? Those empty threats were designed to scare an intruding barbarian. This was a peaceful culture, incapable of violence. Give me the device before it's too late. Well, it didn't stop them from making something capable of violence. I guess you could say the Guardian's at freeze now, but it didn't stop it from being agitated earlier. Look, my friend, there are no more safeguards. Believe me. You've defeated the Guardian, and that was the only safeguard the Atlanteans needed. Right. The Guardian. Oh, also the whole self-destruct thing mentioned in one of the viewers, in case you think I've forgotten. Why are you concerned? Do you really believe they would destroy themselves? Yes, they would. They have so often talked about worry of their technology, especially their genetic manipulation technology being used in horrific ways. If, if that was the only way to safeguard it, then I fully expect they would be willing to sacrifice their own lives for the sake of protecting something that could fuck up the evolution of an entire species. You know, like protecting it from some scientist so desperate for validation he'd rather take the glory of a discovery than weigh the moral decision. Look, if you don't give them to me, Take them yourself. Don't be a fool. Take them and go. Do it for mankind. Okay. Surprisingly noble of you. That leaves one question. Even if sending the device in the pods killed me and gave humanity, according to you, a great boon of quality to their lives, it would only do so if used properly. If used properly. I could co-sign humanity to countless years of destruction as those in power keep the power for themselves, and then they enhance only their own bloodlines. The poor and destitute are kept out, who be the ultimate eugenics, where we really do create supermen. All my friends, they face pain in their lives from so many people brought on by so much religious and cultural prejudice. Those in power will become more physically powerful, more intelligent, and not necessarily more morally refined. Then they can justify even more so looking down on what they consider their inferiors. If you don't end up enhanced... My goddess, the hell I'd unleash. I can't trust humanity to make the right call. The decision isn't yours anymore, Alex. It's mine. And I know what I have to do. I'm giving these pods back to the Atlanteans. I'm launching the ship and everyone is going home. Both us and them. I'm starting the Easter Island transfer for you now. I'll launch the ship after and follow you through. Alex, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. At least we get to go home. Thank you. I am grateful to be leaving, believe me. But you send me back with nothing. Only fantastic stories. Yeah. I know. What? his transport completed before the wormhole completely destabilized. Not just that, but whatever time this is. I'm here for keeps. Okay, there is still an escape pod module, so I don't have to leave with the ship. There is still a chance that this is in contemporary time.
Station launch initiated. Two minutes remaining. Okay, launch system appears to be working. Now, I could stay here. I could go to the home world. That would be quite an adventure, but I'd miss my home too much. I've got to take the chance, at least, that I can get back there. There's only one way to find out when I am. Let's hope Alex's estimation in the journal is right. The escape pod module in the video viewer seemed to suggest it ran through the ship, kind of like the elevator. I'm going to assume that that doubles as the escape module. Station launch in one minute. Ah. I suppose I should probably say my farewells. Goodbye, frozen Atlantean people. Enjoy your home. Except the mechanical monster in the far chamber. Don't flurry if you aren't woken up. You won't be missed. You electronic bitch. So, do I like press this or something? Ten. Well, how nine, is that two minutes already? Eight. Seven. Six. Until the great reunion. My phone gets signal out in the middle of the ocean, but I can't get a signal in my own home when I'm under the blankets. Wait, bloody hell, what signal? If I get signal, that means somebody set us up the cell towers, which means I am not too far time-wise from my home. I need to call my friend. Her reaction and answer should tell me everything I need to know. Hello, Cinder. Where's it, Erica, today? Oh, it worked. You're here. What worked? I really hope I already met you or this will be an awkward conversation. What Look, the hell? I just finished traveling through time. Okay. I met a bunch of pompous Atlanteans and sent them back home with their technology. Now I'm stuck okay, in the ocean yeah. in an escape capsule. Right. Are you okay, So Cinder? how's your day going? Um, I'm doing fine. Uh, that sounds like quite an adventure. How, how did that come about? I found a time portal in a cave on Easter Island. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you now? And now I'm stuck in the ocean. Um, okay, well, at least you're safe. Safe. In the middle of the ocean. Oh, I can't believe I'm indulging these stupid fantasies. Um, um the, yeah, you've got quite a social distance going on there. Social distance? Oh my gosh, you're not playing around, are no, you? No, I really don't know what you're talking about. Um, you're gonna wish you never came home. Well, that was a conversation I did not want to have. Hang on, is that a ship with its horn? Maybe I'll finally be rescued. Feels kind of sad, actually. It's the end of a journey. Stop blaring your buddy horn. I'm trying to be introspective. 